Today, we're going to take a practical look at the importance of a bullet's ballistic coefficient from a hunter's perspective. Okay, so we're going to take a very simple but practical look at the bullet's ballistic coefficient and what that does for you as a hunter and whether or not you should choose a high BC over a lower BC bullet for your next outing or your next hunt. Um, so to begin with, what is a bullet's ballistic coefficient? Well, first of all, in your reloading manuals, it's represented by a three-digit number starting with the decimal. Um, and all that is is an indicator of how well that bullet is going to travel through the air. Okay, so some of you are probably wondering, you know, is there really that much difference between a high BC versus a low BC? And whether or not it really matters for you and where you're hunting and what cartridge you're shooting. Well, my question, my answer to you is it very well could, depending on your situation. Now, a little later, we're going to look at a couple examples um, and show you exactly what that difference is. But first, let's look at how BC affects that bullet in flight. So when that projectile of yours leaves the barrel, the instant it leaves the end of that barrel, it is meeting resistance and friction in the atmosphere. The wind is trying to blow it off course and gravity is trying to pull it to the ground. So a higher BC is going to allow that bullet to resist those forces. It's going to allow that bullet to carry more velocity down range than a lower BC bullet could or would. And that is important for a couple of factors, for a couple of reasons. Number one, time of flight. And that is important because when, with respect to wind, the less time that that bullet is traveling from point A to point B, the less time that wind has to play on it. Secondly, impact velocity. That is important. The higher impact velocity that bullet has, the more retained kinetic energy that bullet has stored up to deposit once it gets there. And then lastly, when we're looking at trajectory, again, it's a time of flight issue. The faster that projectile is able to move down range, the further it's going to get prior to gravity having that full effect on it. So <clears throat> those are the forces at play here. And again, I've got a couple examples I'm going to show you. Um, we're using the 7mm REM mag. Example number one is going to be a lower BC 150 grain nozzler partition versus a higher BC 150 grain nozzler Acubon long range. And then the final example is going to be a 30 6 We're going to be shooting 180 grain spear grand slam with a lower BC versus 178 grain Hornady ELDX, which has the much higher BC. So let's take a look at those. Okay, starting out, we have the 150s, the partition in the Acubon long range. I have the starting velocity at 3,248 feet per second for each of them. And for what it's worth, I have them zeroed at 250 yards. The advantage of the Acubon long range in velocity from the muzzle to 250 yards is 83 feet per second. You go out to 400 yards, that gap widens slightly to 125 feet per second. So with respect to energy, what does that look like? At the muzzle, they both have 3,514 pounds of energy. Out at 250 yards, the advantage to the Acubon long range is 152 foot-pounds, 2,461 for the partition and 2,613 for the Acubon long range. Out at 400 yards, that gap opens up to 207 foot-pounds. 1,965 pounds for the partition and 2,172 pounds for the Acubon long range. With respect to uh, trajectory now, both zeroed at 250 yards. The partition is striking 2 inches high at 100. The Acubon long range is 1.9 at 100. Zeroed at 250. At 300 yards, <clears throat> the partition is down 2.9 inches. Acubon long range, 2. 8 inches. Out to 400 yards, the partition is down 12.7 and the Acubon long range is down 11.9. So that's an 8 
tenth of an inch advantage to the Acubon long range at 400 yards. So I think the biggest gap or difference here is the actual wind drift. Um, at 250 yards, the partition will drift with a 10 mile an hour wind, 90 degrees perpendicular to the flight of the bullet, will drift 3.8 inches. The Acubon long range will drift 3.2 inches. Out at 400 yards, the partition will drift 10.3 inches, and the Acubon long range will drift 8.4 inches, giving it a 1.9 or 2 inch advantage over the lower BC partition. Okay, now on to the 30-06, which I believe the difference between the two here is a little more pronounced than the 7 millimeter example. So, the 30 at 6 shooting 180 grain grand slam, which is by Spear, the lower BC bullet. And then we have the 178 grain ELDX by Hornady, which is the higher BC bullet. Um, both have a starting muzzle velocity of 2,750 feet per second. Both are zeroed at 250 yards, where the ELDX has a 176 feet per second advantage. And then at 400 yards, you have a 263 feet per second advantage to the ELDX. On the energy front, the 180 grain Grand Slam at the muzzle has 3,022 pounds of energy. The slightly lighter ELDX has 2,989 pounds of energy. However, you get out to 250 yards, the ELDX has clearly caught up and surpass the, the Grand Slam by 305 foot-pounds. Out to 400 yards, that gap has increased to 400 foot-pound advantage for the ELDX over the Grand Slam. But still, for the Grand Slam, again, 400 yards, 1,395 pounds, certainly enough for whitetail, mule deer, and even elk. Okay, for trajectory, again, both 0 to 250, the Grand Slam is three and a half high at 100. ELDX is three inches high at 100. Zero at 250. 300 yards, the Grand Slam is down four and a half inches. The ELDX is down four inches. 400 yards, the Grand Slam is down 20 inches. And the ELDX is down 17 inches. A three inch difference for the higher BC ELDX. So when it comes to wind drift, this is where I believe the higher BC is really going to benefit you the most. Um, in this example, uh, we'll just go out to 250 yards first. There is a 2 inch advantage um, to the ELDX at 250 yards. Again, with a 10 mile an hour wind at 90 degrees perpendicular to the path of the bullet. Uh, then out at 400 yards, that grows to a six inch advantage to the ELDX um, out to 400 yards. Okay, those were a couple really generic examples right out of a loading manual, right onto a computer software program. Certainly not real world, I understand that. But I did want to provide you just a quick snapshot on paper, um, the difference between the higher BC bullets and the lower BC bullets um, in the context of a real world hunting distance. Um, the 0 to 300 with a once in a lifetime, maybe 400 yard poke. Um, and in that context, is there really that much difference between the higher BC ELDX or Acubon long range compared to um, the Spear Grand Slam or the Nosler Partition? And I would argue no. There's really not enough difference uh, to go one way or the other. However, there is a bit more benefit for you with a higher BC when it comes to wind. Uh, it seems like the wind had more effect on the lower BC bullets um, than anything else. Um, but with respect to bullet drop, energy, velocity, eh, to me not, not a big deal. Um, I think most importantly, shoot what is most accurate out of your rifle, um, whether it's the, the higher BC or not. And then one last challenge that you might run into, uh, and I haven't mentioned this yet, your higher BC bullets are generally heavy for caliber, longer weight bullets, um, and your rifle may not have the, rate, the proper rate of twist in the barrel to properly stabilize those uh, out at distance. So something to, something to look into. 
Um, so, but other than that, you know what? Like I said, shoot what's accurate in your rifle. It's going to work just fine. Appreciate you being here at 358 Outdoors. We'll see you next time.